I am sick and tired of seeing the Constitution be used differently, uh, depending on your politics that is anti-American. It's really political warfare, not lawfare. This is election interference at its finest against the leading candidate right now for president. We had no time for it. There's reality and then there's this world that they all live in and they put on quite a performance trying to make it look like there was corruption that doesn't exist. But it is loud and clear. They've got nothing and I am sick and tired of seeing it. Pay attention America. Pay attention. Sunday, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor to be at AmFest. Thank you to Charlie Kirk and their team. What an event this is. 2024, folks, we're going to make some history. And we're going to see young Americans reject the left more than ever. Because what we're up against and what I'm seeing in the courtroom is political lawfare and it's got to stop we are going to lose our country our constitution and everything that the founding fathers created and wanted for our country if we don't wake up show up and speak up and that's the truth and if I'm honest with you when I first became a lawyer I believed in the judicial system in this country. I thought judges weren't corrupt. I thought they didn't care about politics when they put on their black robe. That is not the reality of this country right now. And it is because of the radical left and because they cannot beat us. <clears throat> so what they're doing is interfering with an election. But that's why I like coming to events like this. I was so lucky when President Trump asked me to join his legal team. What an honor. And many of you may not know, the first case that I took on as him being the plaintiff was the proudest day of my life. And that's when I sued crooked Hillary Clinton. And I got to tell you, it felt good to file those papers. I took on the Justice Department. I took on everything having to do with the Russia hoax, the fake FISA warrants that they lied and got. And it was all in a perfect complaint that got assigned to a Clinton appointed judge. And what do you think happened? Nobody's heard of the case, right? It's because it's gone. I never met the judge. I never walked into the courtroom. There were probably 50 lawyers representing all of the radical left. Clinton's lawyers, Mook's lawyers, and the list goes on and on and on. One month, it got dismissed, and me and President Trump got sanctioned a million dollars for going against crooked Hillary. You didn't know that, did you? Fake news, folks. Fake news. They won't report it. But guess what? We paid that million, and we're going to keep on fighting. So I'm sure everybody has seen for the last 11 joyous weeks, I've been attacked and attacking Miss Letitia James. The Attorney General for the State of New York, who is trying to kill the Trump family, their organization, and the presidency, because before she was even in office, before she had access, Miss James said, I'm going to campaign on one thing. This is how I'm going to get in office. This is how I'm going to get famous. And that's by getting Trump. 
She said, I'm going to turn every page on the Trump organization. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get Trump and I'm going to go home. That's what we're dealing with. Well, I've got a message for Miss James. She can bring her witch hunts, but I am the witch hunt slayer. So voting at the ballot box is no longer a path to victory for the left. They have to use this lawfare. They have to destroy our justice system, have people who are in the courtroom campaigning against Trump, making decisions about his company. That is what we're up against. But thank God President Trump is resilient. Thank God. He's wealthy because he can fund it. But I'll tell you right now, they've been coming after him since 2015 when he walked down that escalator at Trump Tower. Hillary Clinton and the Democrats illegally spied on his campaign. They had a fake dossier that was through the media and the fake Russia hoax. Then it was the first sham impeachment over a phone call to Ukraine. Then we had a sham impeachment number two over the non-crime of objecting to election results. And then we had Mar-a-Lago and the raid on Mar-a-Lago. And I'll tell you what, I was sitting with the president the morning of that raid. We were in Trump Tower and I won't get into conversations that are privileged, but I will tell you this. That man acted like it was just a regular Tuesday. <laughs> and that is why he is who he is. He is not afraid. And the more they come after him, the more we get up and we come after them. And you know what? It shows because his poll numbers are way up. So despite there being absolutely no evidence in Ms. James's case, let me give you some information about what they did. They had a loan. They paid it early. They never defaulted. They were vetted by some of the biggest banks in the country. They did absolutely nothing wrong. They changed the skyline of New York and now Miss James for her own political ambitions and the Soros backed DAs and AGs across this country cannot stay in office unless they accomplish one thing and that's keeping President Trump out of office. So we are in the fight, but I got to tell you, it's a good thing I like to fight. And that, that is the core of who Donald Trump is. Despite the tyrannic, tyrannical evil regimes throughout history, the dark, desperate forces will literally do anything and everything to try and shut out the light. It is exposing every abuse of power that I have seen. Where power is given and supposed to be ethical and pure, it no longer is. But that is at the core of who he is. He brings light, even in the darkest of times. And he brings hope to all of us when we think it's lost. Most importantly, he brings results. And let's remember, those results are not results that you see in Washington. Those are the results that we feel at home because our borders aren't open, because I'm not worried about what my school's teacher is teaching my children, because there's bottom feeders and morally bankrupt individuals who couldn't care less about the success of the country. As long as they get a pat on the back from their Democrat puppet masters. But it's why events like this are so important. It's so great that you guys all came out because everyone in this room puts America first. Everyone in this room cares about our country. And by the way, have you ever noticed 
that absolutely everything that they attack Donald Trump on, they have done themselves. Look at the boxes hoax. I call it the boxes hoax. That is the president. Mar-a-Lago raid. The president, sitting president, has something called the Presidential Records Act. He can take documents, he can declassify them, and he can take them where he wants and move them. You know who can't? Joe Biden, because he wasn't president when he took his boxes in six different locations, in Chinatown, in his car next to his son who's doing God knows what with God knows who. But that is what they do. They hide what they've done by going after Trump. Look at the shiny ball, everybody. Don't look at us. Well, they've got one year. And then we're going to be looking at them. Deep and hard. And I'll tell you right now, if I'm in Washington, I'll be relentless, too. So they claim they're compassionate. But they let cartels and human smugglers wreak havoc on our border. They claim they care about protecting our most vulnerable communities, while they literally coddle violent criminals and allow chaos and crime to plague the cities. Miss James is sitting in court trying to take President Trump's business away, and her city has fallen apart. Look at your own states, California, New York, you're a disaster because you're too busy looking at Trump to care about the people you're supposed to care about. This all goes beyond just partisan politics or for me making arguments in a court of law. It's not about that. When I became a lawyer, I never thought I'd be standing here. I didn't go to school for that. Thought I'd be writing a couple boring briefs, maybe get a cool client. But what an honor. What a moment. We can turn this country around. And it has to happen now. They are trying to scare us into surrendering our dignity, losing our will to stand strong, and sacrificing our beliefs and destroying the Constitution. But I'm here to tell you that is never going to happen. This movement is too strong. We are too resilient and too ready to save America. Because everything is at stake. It's not just about what I see in the courts. And I said this outside the courtroom. President Trump has me. I'm outside screaming in a mic with a camera in my face. But what's going to happen when it's you? You don't have me. And you've got some corrupt judge that looks at how you voted and you're supposed to be afraid? No, no, no. They got the wrong team. That is not us. We're going to keep fighting for our children and for generations to come. And I can tell you. We will look back years from now, and let's remember these moments. Let's remember how we all came here because we were afraid of what's happening to our country. But I always tell my children one thing, and I'm going to say it to you all. The opposite of fear is faith. So let's be able to say that we made our country stronger. We made it more free and we made it more prosperous. And let's be able to say that when the storm came and when the tides rose and when the noise got loud, we were loudest. I believe in this movement. I believe in what's to come. And I absolutely believe we will finish this job. We get to write our own story not the regime in Washington. And what a story it's going to be. Act one was the political upset that shocked the world and all the prosperity and success that followed. Act two was the rigged 2020 election that 
will forever change our nation. But now we're at Act 3. President Trump wrote a book called The Art of the Deal. Act 3 will be the art of the comeback. Thank you guys so much for having me. God bless you all. God bless President Trump. And God bless America. Thank you.